Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Friday, and welcome back to Romance and Modern Mythology. This week, we're going to focus in on the relationship between Anne Elliot and Captain Wentworth. These are characters from the novel Persuasion by Jane Austen, which was published in 1817. And if you're more of a film adaptation kind of a Jane Austen enthusiast, the 1995 version is the absolute best. In that particular movie, Anne Elliot was played by Amanda Root and Captain Wentworth was played by Karen Hines. Uh, this is a story that I think does not get the love that it should. It's a wonderful, wonderful story about the triumph of love resurrected, the triumph of love after obstacles, the triumph of love that actually lasts. And it's a beautiful story with a beautiful message. It has some of the best lines that uh, Jane Austen ever wrote in it. And honestly, I, I just wish it got a little bit more appreciation. Um, hopefully after you hear me uh, talk you through the relationship that developed between Anne and Captain Wentworth, you'll see why I love them so much and why this story is well worth checking out. So, who are these people? Anne Elliot is the daughter of Sir Walter Elliot. Uh, she has an older sister named Elizabeth, a younger sister named Mary, who is married and to a man named Charles Musgrove. And they have a close neighbor named Lady Russell. And ever since the death of Anne's mother, Lady Russell's been kind of standing in that place for Anne. You know, looking after her, being concerned with her, and uh, just being a surrogate mother to her. Now, Captain Wentworth... Uh, he's a man in the prime of his life. He's had a very successful career in the Navy, uh, very adventurous. He's, he's always been very lucky, and there's something uh, dashing and charming about him. Now, before the novel begins, uh, Anne Elliot and Captain Wentworth had been engaged to be married, or, you know, near enough. Uh, but this was before he had gained his captaincy, before he had uh, gained his earned his fortune, before he had gained any acclaim, because he had been very successful during the Napoleonic Wars. It, in short, it was before he was in a position to really uh, to be able to afford a wife and the possibility of a family. And because there was so much anxiety about it and because uh, her father had um, has a real issue with placing undue importance upon rank. Uh, Anne had a lot of pressure to break it off, uh, but she also had a lot of pressure from Lady Russell, and it was really Lady Russell's influence saying, this match is really imprudent, uh, you can't be doing this, you're only 19, and it was because of her influence that Anne finally took the step of ending the engagement. Captain Wentworth went off to sea, Anne stayed at home, and Anne never really quite recovered her spirits from this. So now fast forward about eight years. As a direct result of Sir Walter Elliot's complete lack of fun a financial sense, uh, the family is in a position to where they are deeply in debt, and in order to get out of debt, they're going to have to move out of their homes, rent out the estate. So what ends up happening is that they rent it out to tenants by the names of Admiral and Mrs. Croft. Mrs. Croft is the sister of Captain Wentworth. So you see, from the very start, we're starting to pull dear Captain Wentworth back into Anne's orbit. Now, in preparation for this change of household, uh, Sir Walter and Sister Elizabeth, they uh, scurry off to uh, live in a place called Bath. It's kind of a touristy town, you know, health spa, that sort of thing. But it's a place where he's not going to get into as much financial trouble while, you know, they work on getting out of debt. And while they're there... Anne goes off to Applecross, where she visits her younger sister, Mary. And Mary is a perpetual hypochondriac, and she's always at odds with her in-laws over imagined slights. So after this, after Anne's departure, the Crofts move into the neighborhood, and in short order, Captain Wentworth comes to visit them. And in due course, he's making the rounds, he's meeting other people in the area, and that includes Anne's sister, Mary, and her in-laws, Mr. and Mrs. Musgrove. Now, Captain Wentworth and Anne's brother-in-law, Charles, they immediately become friends. And Charles has two younger sisters named Henrietta and Louisa. And the girls both take a shine to Captain Wentworth. Because why wouldn't you? Here's this heroic war hero, complete in uniform. He's 
hale and hearty and wealthy and charming and great fun and just it was inevitable that the girls would you know be kind of bedazzled by him and Anne finds herself not only in company with him which would have been awkward enough but she's also watching him get absolutely fussed over by these two younger girls not a fun thing by any stretch of the imagination now, uh, throughout this, uh, Anne Elliot and Captain Wentworth, they're kind of maintaining this distant civility. No one in their immediate circle is any the wiser about their history or why Captain Wentworth is, you know, kind of just indifferent towards her. And uh, as Anne is having to endure him treating her Oh, I would almost say on terms of a stranger. She's also having to watch the girls continually flirt at them, continually throw themselves at them. And of course, it doesn't take very long before people decide, oh, well, you know, he's around, the girls like him, he'll probably marry one of them, most likely Louisa. Uh, despite this, and despite Captain Wentworth at this point not actively seeking Anne out and not actively uh, trying to interact with her, he's still quietly taking notice of Anne. Um, if he sees that she's uncomfortable or that she's tired or anything else, he does take steps to ensure her well-being and her comfort, but he does so in an inconspicuous way, and it goes completely under the radar. Now, during his visit, Captain Wentworth, he gets a letter from a friend of the Navy, a Captain Harvel, and um, he starts talking about uh, his friendship with Captain Harville and how much he loves him and his family and all this. And it gets decided that, you know, their whole friends group is going to go to where Captain Harville is living in Lyme. It's by the seashore and it's going to be an opportunity to meet Captain Wentworth's friends. And uh, so we, ent we find ourselves meeting Captain and Mrs. Harville and Captain Benwick. Captain Benwick was living with Captain and Mrs. Harville and he had actually at one time had was supposed to have married uh, Captain Harville's sister. But while Benwick was at sea, she died. And so he was grieving. He was utterly bereft. He was reading entirely too much uh, poetry, <laughs> especially the melancholy variety. He was very fond of Byron. Uh, but uh, during the course of the acquaintance, Anne and Benwick, they become friends. You know, they do share similar tastes in literature. They both like poetry. And they get to talking, and he talks about his loss and how much uh, his late fiance Phoebe, had meant to him. And says, you know, thanks, Anne, for her kindness towards him and listening to him, but saying that she couldn't possibly understand what he has lost. And Anne's declared that she had, because, you know, she truly believed that uh, she had lost uh, Captain Wentworth forever, and that there was no getting back his regard, and that, you know, all the hopes that she had had about him were you know, that there was just nothing was ever going to come of them. Now, she didn't tell him that much, but she sim but her simple declaration that she understood what it was to have loved and lost, that is a statement that Captain Wentworth overheard. And you, you could just kind of see the wheels in his brain turning. It just seemed that uh, neither he nor Anne were altogether free from the feelings of the past. So the time comes and uh, they're about ready to leave Lyme. And at this point, Benwick is uh, talking to Anne and he looks as though he's on the verge of asking her if she would be willing to enter into a courtship. Uh, he might have been on the verge of suggesting something even more, possibly an engagement. I mean, people did enter into those things uh, a lot more rapidly than we do today. And, of course, Captain Wentworth, uh, Louise is continuing to throw herself at him, and all the outside observers think that those two are probably on the verge of an engagement themselves. But before anything with either potential couple could be settled or made official, Louisa takes a tumble. She severely injures herself. Uh, what was happening is that they were uh, walking along the seashore. There were these steps, and they were very steep and very narrow. And Louisa called to the captain, you know, catch me. And he does. And then she goes up the stairs again, goes up higher. He tells her don't. He tells her stop. But she's determined. She jumps anyway. And he's not able to catch her. She crashes, takes a terrible blow to the head. Now, uh... Of course, a complete pandemonium ensues, uh, but Anne has presence of mind. She takes charge. She sends Benwick for the doctor, and uh, while Louisa's being attended to, 
um, she's giving both Captain Wentworth and her brother-in-law Charles a nudge that, you know, okay, someone needs to go and get Louise's parents. They need to be told. Her father probably wants to be here. Um, and Captain Wentworth said that, you know, okay, you know, either him or Charles is going to have to go and do this. And Charles quite understandably says that he can't leave his sister. Uh, Wentworth agrees to that, and he says, but he would like Anne to stay and look after Louisa because no one is as capable as Anne is. Uh, but Sister Mary puts the kibosh on that plant, saying, oh, it's so unkind. Anne's nothing to Louisa. I'm family. You can't send me away. As if, you know, Mary's going to be any use whatsoever in a sick room. But uh, she gets her, though, her way. And so, in the end, Captain Wentworth takes Anne and Henrietta home. Uh, he collects Mr. Musgrove to take him to his injured daughter. And uh, on the way journey back, uh, Wentworth is just blaming himself for Louise's injury. You know, he, had, he hadn't been able to stop her from jumping off the stairs at that great height. He hadn't been able to catch her. And uh, her will had ultimately been stronger than his. And so, he blamed what he saw as his weakness uh, from preventing the accident. He just thought it was all his fault. Now, after it's known that Louisa is going to live and she's going to recover, that's the point at which Anne ends up going to her father, Sir Walter, and her sister, Elizabeth, in Bath. Now, once there, Anne discovers that her cousin, Mr. Elliot, has been a, a constant caller on her father and on her sister. Now, this comes as a pretty big surprise because her cousin, Mr. Elliot, and her father, Sir Walter, they'd had a quarrel years and years ago, and they had not spoken a word since. And uh, it becomes quickly apparent once he pays another visit uh, that he's going to show a very marked interest in Anne, and her sister, Elizabeth, is infuriated by this. But Lady Russell, who, remember, has been Anne's mother figure, is absolutely over the moon. Now, remember, at this time, it wasn't unusual for cousins to marry. And Lady Russell think, oh, okay, you know, he's back on good terms with Sir Walter. You know, she, you know, he seems to be doing all right in the world. He has, you know, good manners and correct opinions. A marriage between him and Anne would be the most agreeable outcome at all. And so she's encouraging this. And you see on various evenings, Mr. Elliot, he's dancing attendance on Anne. And again, this is much to Elizabeth's dissatisfaction. Now, uh, during her stay, Anne discovers that she has an old school friend who is in Bath. She's a widow now. Her name is Mrs. Smith, and she decides to go and renew the acquaintance. Now, Mrs. Smith is in very ill health, but she has a very kind nurse, and uh, amongst, um, you know, taking care of her physical needs, she also keeps Mrs. Smith very well informed about the goings-on as Bath and those in it, because, you know, people talk in front of the servants and the she keeps her ears open so she knows what's going on and who it's going on with. During this time, Admiral and Mrs. Croth also come to Bath uh, for the sake of the Admiral's health. And the Admiral is the one who tells Anne about Louisa Musgrove's uh, recovery. Now, he had expected to hear from his brother-in-law, Captain Wentworth, that there was going to be an engagement. But, of course, after the accident, I'm like, well, she's got to recover. you got to make sure that knock to her noggin didn't also knock out her good sense. And so, you know, he saw that, okay, well, you know, so we're not getting an announcement. But then, after a time, he said that Captain Wentworth, you know, left Lyme and was keeping his distance. And he thought, well, that's very strange. And then the next communication he got from him was Captain Wentworth announcing that Louisa was going to marry Captain Benwick. All through her recovery, they had spent a lot of time together. They'd read a great deal of poetry together. And they had ended up falling in love and they were going to marry. And the Admiral shares that, you know, considering the way Captain Wentworth wrote about the engagement, uh, you would not think that he'd ever had a thought of Louisa for himself. Now, after hearing this information, Anne bumps into Captain Wentworth, who has just arrived in Bath, and the dynamic between them has changed. Uh, there is an awkwardness that wasn't there before, and there's also more warmth than that chilly politeness that they had before. And just as they were starting to get a little bit more comfortable, in walks her cousin, Mr. Elliot. You know, he's come to, to walk Anne home. And you see that poor Captain Wentworth is just a teensy tiny bit jealous. Isn't it wonderful? Then Anne and uh, Captain Wentworth uh, briefly meet again. It's at um, a musical recital. I think it's at Italian opera or something. And... Uh, he mentions uh, Louisa's engagement to Benwick. Um, he says uh, there's 
he's just kind of astonished because he knows how much that Ben Wick really loved his late fiance Phoebe. And he just couldn't believe that he had recovered so swiftly. He's like, you know, a man doesn't, you know, ought not to get over that. He does not. And this clearly communicates that Captain Wentworth is not the kind of man who just gets over someone he loves. If he loves, he's going to love sincerely, completely, honestly, and permanently. And this, of course, is allowing Anne to hope against all hope that maybe he still loves her and that maybe all of her feelings towards him might not have been just thrown away. Now, uh, through this, Mr. Elliot is continuing his attentions to Anne, and he's becoming more outspoken by them. And I wouldn't say that she's necessarily becoming more uncomfortable by them, but she is putting the brakes on him. She's trying to create some distance. Now, Captain Wentworth is not noticing Anne's uh, attempts to, you know, gently rebuff Mr. Elliot, but he is definitely noticing that Mr. Elliot is spending a lot of time with Anne, and Captain Wentworth is obviously jealous, so much so that he leaves the music recital because he just can't bring himself to watch Mr. Elliot fawn all over Anne. Now, it uh, becomes readily apparent um, that according to the scuttlebutt, uh, the match between Mr. Elliot and Anne Elliot is rapidly forthcoming, so much so that Admiral Croft ends up sending Captain Wentworth to ask Anne that if, uh, upon her marriage, if she's wanting to move back to her ho childhood home. And if so, you know, he and Mrs. Croft would be happy to find themselves another place, but just to let them know. <laughs> but before Anne can tell Captain Wentworth that no such thing is occurring, enter Lady Russell on the scene. And Anne just, uh, you know, hands in the air. <laughs> just kind of huffs in despair, leaves the room because she can't take it because she knows these two are not old friends in the slightest. Captain Wentworth knows exactly who it was that persuaded Anne to refuse him to begin with. Lady Russell, who has no shame, you know, observes that uh, Captain Wentworth has an extraordinary ability to discompose Anne. And then Wentworth retorts in a very cross voice, that uh, Lady Russell has an extraordinary ability to influence Anne, and he finds that very difficult to forgive. So you can tell the lines in the sand are still drawn. Not exactly uh, going to be friends there. Now, Anne is so upset. I mean, she can see by this time that this wrong idea has been circulating, and she goes to visit her friend, Mrs. Smith. And she asks, asking her, you know, why in the world does the town think that every that she's going to marry Mr. Elliot. And after her, Mrs. Smith confirms, like, you're, you're, you're not going to? And Anne confirms, no. And then you know, Mrs. Smith and, and, and her nurse is saying, you know, how relieved they are. This is very, very good, because they had just heard that uh, Mr. Elliot, uh, his regard for Anne is not sincere in the slightest. It's all very mercenary. Uh, he's trying to gain more footing in the family. He's trying to make sure that if he becomes a son-in-law, he'll be able to exert influence over Anne's father to prevent him from possibly remarrying. Because if he remarries, that means he could sire an heir, and that heir would cut Mr. Elliot out of his inheritance. And Mr. Elliot wants the title, he wants the land, and everything that goes along with it. Anne is furious by his underhanded motives. She hadn't uh, wanted to marry him before, but to see that he was willing to use her in this cruel way, uh-uh, no, she was done. Now, next we see Anne uh, with her Musgrove friends, and uh, Captains Wentworth and Harville are there. They had been sent to town uh, by Captain Benwick, He's because uh, Captain Benwick, he had a little miniature of himself, and um, the inscription had originally been for his late fiancée, Phoebe, who, was, of course, if you remember, was Captain Harville's sister. Uh, Captain Harville just <laughs> couldn't quite bring himself uh, to do this. So he asked Captain Wentworth to help him. And, you know, Captain Wentworth, he was busy writing a letter to the jeweler with instructions and this and that. And while he's writing, uh, Captain Harville and um, Anne are talking about, you know, grieving and lost loves and, you know, who for who is able to uh, move beyond their grief first, men or women. And uh, Captain Harville thought, oh, well, you know, men, be, oh, 
you know, all histories are against you, prose and verse. And Anne observes that, yes, but those were written by men. And uh, she said that the only thing she claimed, and it wasn't something that, um, that men should covet, was that there was a tendency of women to love longest after all hope was gone. Captain Wentworth is listening to this conversation. Now the time comes for uh, the, the captains to go on their way, and after they leave, Anne realizes that Captain Wentworth left a letter for her to read. In this letter, he's confessing his feelings for her, saying, Don't say that man forgets sooner than woman. He has loved none but her. Um, she alone is the reason why he's in Bath to begin with, and he expresses his hope that it isn't too late and that she will accept his hand in marriage. Now, after reading this letter, Anne is just a bit overcome. And she dashes out. Uh, she's followed by her brother-in-law, Charles. Uh, they quickly bump into Captain Wentworth, and Charles, you know, wanders off. Uh, you know, he, he leaves her in Captain Wentworth's uh, capable hands. And that's when Anne and Captain Wentworth are able to reconcile completely. They are on the same page at last. And uh, by the end of the evening, uh, their engagement is public knowledge. Mr. Elliot is put firmly in his place. Anne's friends, uh, the Crofts and the Musgroves, are all delighted. And her neglectful re relatives, namely her father, Sir Walter, and her rather uh, nasty sister, Elizabeth, are astonished that anyone wanted to marry her at all. But all's well has end well. And in the last scene of the 1995 movie version, we see that Anne and Captain Wentworth, you know, this is after their wedding, they're happily married, they're on his ship, and they're sailing off into the sunset quite literally. And it's just such a beautiful payoff. It, it's such a beautiful payoff, not only to the idea that if if love is actually real, and it's actually an attachment of of two people who do genuinely know each other, who are well suited, and whose and whose feelings have always been very honest. It can last through years. It can last through obstacles. It can last through misunderstandings, and it is something that actually can be repaired and be even better than what it was before. So uh, romantic that I am, I really do love this novel, and this is something that uh, you don't see in in Jane Austen's other novels. I mean. Not to this extent, not to the extent where, you know, the final pair honestly thought on both sides that, oh, they were never going to be together at all, and then found their way back to each other. Uh, this, I mean, even even in uh, Sense and Sensibility with uh, Eleanor Dashwood and uh, Edward Ferris, it still isn't quite on this level. It isn't on the level of having an eight-year separation and then coming back and realizing you're just as much in love with that person as ever. You know, yes, you may have been disappointed by them. Yes, you may have been angry with them uh, for listening to advice that, while financially prudent, it still wasn't the right thing to do. But you can get past that. You can restore that trust. You can restore the camaraderie. And love can win the day. So, that is my dribbling romanticism for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you've been persuaded to check out Persuasion, whether you're reading the book or you're watching one of the film adaptations. They're all well worth watching. And, of course, uh, if you have not already joined Blackbird's Brew on Discord, you are very welcome to do so. There is an invitation in the description box below. And please uh, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave me a comment. But I think that's it for now. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.